YouTube and welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I'm your host Lucas and I know that I just released a vlog telling you guys that I was going to be away for a week and there was probably not going to be very many videos. However, something really cool arrived in the mail today and I figured I would do a very quick video and run over part one of our build and review series for the Rapture. Yeah, you're right guys, that's it. The Shindrones Rapture has finally arrived and I have it here and uh, we're going to take a quick look at the frame itself, we're going to talk about it a little bit and we're going to go over the components that I'm going to be using on the build as well. So let's uh, take a look at the frame. So this is what arrived to me in the mail, look at that thing, it's super cool, super sleek, it's a plus configuration drone. Very interesting, a lot of screws down here at the bottom to hold the canopy together. And from what I understand, the canopy also adds a bit of structural integrity to the quad. And uh, it's very interesting, extremely aerodynamic. Uh, it looks like this thing is gonna be pretty fast, especially with the motors that I selected. So I'm super excited to get to build this thing. Um, I have not flown a plus configuration quad yet. This is gonna be my first one, but uh, I've heard that they're fast and they're, they, they corner fairly well. So I'm interested to see how that actually stacks up and how well the tune goes. I'm gonna try to show you guys a little bit of the detail here. Actually, you know what? Let's uh, take a closer look at it on the bench and uh, we can take a look at the details of the frame. So let me move the camera and zoom it in so you guys can see pretty well. So let's take a look at the frame here. Um, the canopy is 3D printed out of, I believe it's EBS. It's very hard, it is not TPU. It looks like it was a pretty decent print by the looks of it though. It looks like mine has a, hmm. Yeah, I really don't like this band right here. So there's a, a band going around here, which looks to me like maybe the filament snagged a little bit or just wasn't feeding so well. So my bad is if this is going to fail at all, it will be on that seam right there. So let's hope that it doesn't fail and I can get a few flights out of this guy. I suspect that the material is pretty strong, but uh, we'll have to see. Uh, if I do, if that does break, I'm probably gonna just end up having to order another one. But um, not bad. I did buy the cheaper version of the canopy, which has a lower resolution, which you can kind of see here with the light, how it's like picking up the light there. So it has a, um, a lower resolution on the layer height, which leaves this, this sort of effect. However, the black version or the version that is the HD kind of where they use a very high resolution print that you can barely feel any sort of uh, lines on it costs a lot more. So I ended up going to the cheaper version because I really was more interested in the shape of the quad and how a plus configuration quad is going to handle versus actually just a canopy itself. So um, it has a bunch of screws here at the bottom that are securing the canopy all the way around. So it looks like it's gonna be nice and solid and it's not gonna go anywhere. And it's probably gonna prevent some of the flex that this frame is gonna wanna do because it is, it's fairly long, right? So uh, let's take a quick look here and remove some of these screws so we can, uh, we can take a better look at the carbon and the canopy as well. Okay. After finally getting the canopy separated from the carbon fiber, I will say this. Uh, this is not necessarily what I would consider a maintenance friendly drone. But uh, here we have the canopy and we can see here inside it's a pretty decent quality print. Very very good. Seems like everything is very solid. Very much a hard material. I think it is ABS. I will confirm later. Um, and yeah, it looks super nice guys. Very very nicely finished and it has channels inside here to run your your motors directly into the 4-in-1 uh, This build kind of requires a 4-in-1. You can't really build this with ARM ESCs Just it's gonna really not work out with these with these channels right here So you have to go with a 4-in-1 and uh, we're gonna talk about that as soon as we start discussing the components itself Looks to me like you can fit a standard 2.1 camera lens here uh, I'm gonna have a little bit of a hard time getting mine to fit here because I use 1.8 which is much smaller However, if you run 2.1 1.1 it looks like there's three adjustments one at a 45 degree angle pretty much and the lowest one is probably about 30 maybe 35 um, you can lock them through the side here so it, it will take a standard HS 1177 and it will just pretty much slide in there it gives you access over here to the sides you can access your USB port or whatever and either side it has two holes here at the top I'm not sure if you can see it right there boom boom you can pull little straws out of there and get your RX antenna out of each one of those and leave it nice protected and this guy right here is for your a uh, your antenna your VTX antenna so you can use some sort of pigtail and screw it in from the back there and then just screw your antenna here and your antenna can be like right over there so I'm gonna try to do something like that with the VTX 03 so uh, let's take a look at the carbon so the carbon's super light this thing is super super light um, let's take a look at the thickness I think it was three millimeters from what I heard 
Yeah, 306 roughly. So three millimeter carbon fibers. It's a little bit less than what I'm used to. I, I tend to go with the four millimeter, but uh, I, I, I wonder if this is gonna work out, if the arms are gonna really survive. These do look very thin, very, very thin as well. So I'm gonna have to be very careful and try not to crash this guy too much. It would be interesting if they had made this front arm removable in some way so that he could like change it, because I guarantee if you're gonna break anything, it's probably gonna be this long guy right here, because just the forces that are gonna be acting on it are probably gonna be enough to snap it, and I would not be surprised. But, has been tested. Uh, I, I know the Night Fury have flown one at Sebring, seemed to like it, so I'm just interested. I just wanna check it out. I can see here by the size of it laying on the palm of my hand, or let's see if I have something else here as a comparison. Boom, TBS race tracker right here. That's how, about how big this guy is, pretty much. Or, let's see, uh, Banka 1500. So this is a Banka 1500, boom, there we go. That's about how big it is. So not big at all, and uh, just has these nice, really long arms. And it's gonna be something kind of like that when it's done. So uh, yeah, interested to see how this is gonna work out and how it's gonna deal with crashes and so on, and tuning, because this is a new geometry that I have not tried before, and I have no idea how that's gonna affect the flight characteristics of the drone. So now that we talked about the frame, let's give a quick overview of the parts that we're gonna be using to make this thing fly. All right, so the first component we're gonna look at is gonna be the motor. So I picked up this guy right here. So this is the DYS Thor, and it is a pretty big beefy motor. It's a 2500 kV, 2406 motor. So this guy here is gonna have plenty of both speed and torque to rotate my props around and make this thing go whoosh. So uh, it should provide a lot of thrust. It is a bit on the heavy side, and that does worry me when mounting it on these arms, but honestly, it's not as heavy as some of the motors that I've used. So I think it'll be okay, and I know for a fact that this thing is gonna make this thing rip, especially with the props that I wanna use, which are the bi-blades. Uh, I've been really liking the 5050C bi-blades from Dow. Those are great. Great props, especially for racing. If you're running high KV motors, I highly recommend them. Uh, I've come to really trust the DYS motors. I run them on almost all my builds. Like I have a lot of them, except for a couple of drones that I have T2s on, and I still prefer the DYS over the T2s. Not necessarily because they're more powerful, but because the durability has been excellent and the price point is really good, and the performance is certainly comparable at the very least. So DYS Thor motors going into these. I have not seen very many builds with these motors just yet, and they're interesting because they have uh, they're pantless. So this is the new term that I've heard for describing these motors. They are pantless, meaning they have absolutely no um, no uh, rim around here to protect things. So I don't really think that that rim matters that much in terms of protection. Once you get a good hit on a motor, it's probably toast anyway most of the time, uh, at least in my experience. So moving on, and oh, the other thing that I like is that super, super long wire. So I'm gonna be able to use this to build on the Shendrone's Rapture without having to splice any wires, which is excellent. So moving up from the motors, we are gonna be using the trusty Cicada 35 amp uh, four in one ESC. These do D-Shot 600 out of the box. I've used these in quite a few builds and they've so far proven to be extremely solid. I haven't had any of them burn out, any of them crap out or give me desyncs so far. So Cicada 35 amp four in ones are awesome. And these ones are the non-back version so they have no five volts because we're not gonna need it. Because the next component on our list here is the flight controller and it is the um, CL Racing F4. So I've used this in a couple of builds now, the Mia X builds that I've talked to you guys about, and um, man, I am loving this flight controller. I have converted most of my fleet over to the CL Racing F4, just because it's so quick and easy to set up and build, like it's literally a couple hours at most because there's very little stuff that you need to solder and all the pads are beautifully laid out and beautifully labeled so that makes your life much much easier and it just flies extremely well i have zero yaw twitch with this board even on beta flight 3.17 it's like minimal on 3.2 with dynamic filters it's literally gone and it just flies really well and so far it's proven to be very durable and uh dependable FC. So uh, we're gonna be talking a little bit more detail about it when we actually go to wire it, and I'll explain how all the pads work in case you missed it from the other videos. So moving up from the flight controller, we are going to be connecting to it with our radio using the latest Radiolink R12 DSM, which I showed you guys on the vlog. And uh, this is just a PPM S-Bus 12 channel receiver with diversity, which is freaking awesome. And this is gonna fit perfectly with the Shen drones here because there's two little holes that you kind of just like fit your antenna through and then you kind of have to figure out a, a spot here to leave your RX. But 
essentially that's what you're gonna get, right? So, um, and that's gonna keep it well away from the props, especially once you put some little sticks here to keep it nice, nice. Um, so really excited about this because of the diversity. I've had problems with the micro receivers on Radiolink, and I think it's because of the lack of diversity, because depending on the angle of the quad, you, you literally lose reception. So I'm hoping this is gonna really help out and make things much more solid. Then we are going to be using our trusty HS1177. This one came from Aurora Geeks with a 1.8 millimeter lens that gives me 170 FOV. Uh, this has just become my go-to camera for literally all builds. I have yet to use a different camera just because I like them so much. I heard really good things about the Swift and the Swift 2, so I might be picking some up to do some reviews and checking them out and seeing if they are indeed that much better than the HS1177. And we are going to be sending the video to the goggles through the tiny little VTX-03. Now, this is not an ideal choice for the Shendrons because it is very difficult to get in there. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way to place this or that where you can still get to that button. Otherwise, I'm gonna have literally have to set this to one channel and then every time that I need to change the channel, I'm gonna have to open that clamshell, which is gonna be a pain in the ass. So the correct VTX to use on the Shendrone's Rapture is something like the TBS Unify or something that comes packed with uh, smart audio so that you can change the channels via your radio with your goggles and not have to physically press that button. I might just poke a hole somewhere there so that I can literally go with an Allen key and just pick at it and try to change the channel. So we'll see, it's gonna be an interesting challenge to solve. Well guys, so there we have it. We did an overview of the Shendrones Rapture and literally that's pretty much all that came on in the package except for I got a little Shendrones uh, uh, strap here. It's a little bit thin. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this or use something else. I have some, uh, uh, sorry, some Kevlar ones that I really wanna try from Drone Matters. Yep, Drone Matters, these guys right here. So I kinda wanna try some of these out so I might replace that one with this one. It's a little bit heavier, a little bit thicker, but it should just barely fit through the canopy, which is good. So, um, we went over to frame, we went over to parts that are gonna be put on this build to make it fly. So uh, next week when I return, I will be kicking off the actual build. We'll be going through it step by step on how to build and, and get this thing together and hovering. And uh, that'll be part two of our build and review series on the Shendrones Rapture. And uh, after that, I will be doing a full video on how it was to get this thing flying and tuned and my impressions on the feel of flying a plus configuration quad, especially one of this format. So guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel because there's a ton of cool content coming out, including the continuation of the LAP RF and TBS uh, our race tracker review that I started, but we're actually gonna put them to the test in the field. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.